Hello there, my fellow infamous hive gangers, and welcome back to some more 40k lore. Starting today, we're gonna be debiting another series on the channel, one focused on the factions and great houses of Necromunda, arguably the most infamous hive world in the Imperium. Also, a realm and a setting known for its standalone Warhammer games. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a number of years now, you might be aware that I've actually done two videos on Necromunda before. You can find them in the Planets playlist. In fact, if you don't know anything about Necromunda, I suggest you watch those videos too, preferably before this one. As for today, we're gonna continue learning about the lesser known but very important guilds of Necromunda, before we start the series proper on the great houses I mentioned earlier. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Necromunda is a world forever balanced on the edge of anarchy. Only the strength of the Imperial House and the holy writ of the Imperium it wields holds the Hive cities and their warring factions together. In the shadow of Lord Gerontius Helmor's rule, the Great Houses prosper, even as they vie for position among each other often fighting proxy wars via the clan houses, which in turn are in constant competition for the attentions of their betters. Such a state of conflict without regulation could, and did at various points in the millennia, tear down the peace of Necromunda, leading to a complete collapse of the system, the deaths of whole hive cities, and worst of all, a failure to pay the taxes. To understand just how order on Necromunda is maintained, one must first understand the nature of the relationship between the houses, or, as it is often known, the Great Web. If it can be imagined, all of Necromunda is a spider's web, connecting every hive, every house and every lord, with the powerful imperial house sitting at the center. And then there are the guilds. It is the merchant's guild that makes up the thin strands holding the houses of Necromunda together. Within the Great Web, they are the connections along which all trade flows, and all the oaths are made. Unlike the clans and noble houses, the merchant guilds do not seize their power via hereditary right or force of arms. In fact, they do not seize power at all. Over the centuries, they have laid claim to the spaces left between the great houses and their vassals among the clan houses, brokering deals between clans who will not speak to one another, or ensuring trade flows smoothly even when open war is tearing a hive city apart. In time, as the power of the Merchant's Guild grew, Lord Gerontius recognized their importance to Necromunda and ratified their claims to power, granting charters to certain families. This authority to handle the vital resources of the hive city doesn't extend to ownership of land, and the families of the Merchant Guild rarely have permanent territories instead constantly traveling between settlements as nomadic traders. Although the inhabitants of Necromunda might sometimes refer to the Merchant's Guild as just one entity, it is in fact made up of many sub-factions, many of which are mighty bodies in their own right. To the citizens of Hive Primus, they are the Water Guild, the Corpse Farmers, or any of the other many names that the individual arms of the Merchant's Guild go by. Often, these factions are simply called guilders, a term synonymous with trade. Officially, each aspect of the merchant's guild is known as a mercator, the high gothic word for a mercantile conclave. This is combined with the high gothic term for their area of dominion and operation. For example, the corpse guild, which oversees the processing of Necromunda's dead and the creation of corpse starch, is known officially as the mercator pallidus. The power of the individual guilds can vary from hive to hive, often depending on local resources. In the shadow of the spoil, the Iron Guild regulates miners and prospectors. On the Sulphurous Sea, it is the Guild of Salts, while in the suffocating depths of Big Hole, Air Guild Zephyrmen ply their trade. In Hive Primus, there are thousands of guilder families and dozens of guilds, although only eight of them hold the greatest power. These are the Prometheum Guild, the Water Guild, the Corpse Guild, the Slave Guild, the Guild of Coin, the Electro Guild, the Iron Guild, and the Air Guild. 
Collectively, they are known in the Palatine Cluster as the Great Guilds, and little business is done here without at least one of them knowing about it. The Prometheum Guild, or Mercator Pyros, sometimes also called the Torchbearers, the Pyre Makers, or the Guild of Flame, controls the light and power in Hive Primus. They deal primarily in Prometheum, a catch-all term in the Imperium for a liquid fuel, often made of hydrocarbons and various isotypes of hydrogen, and the principal fuel for a hive city and the settlements of the Underhive as well. The guild lays claim to all burnable liquids and fuels. This they measure out to the clan houses and hive settlements, their pipes and caravans a lifeline for hivers against the prospect of eternal darkness. Promethium is extracted from pockets of industrial effluvium refined over the millennia beneath the ashen wastes, and it is a mighty source of power and one of the elements of life for those who hope to survive in the cold darkness of the deep hive. In some hives, the agents of the Prometheum Guild are almost a religious order, worshipping the eternal flame as an aspect of the Emperor himself. The flame is kept alight, sometimes by the same family for generations, and carried with them for their nomadic journeys. When such a flame is brought into a settlement, it is a great occasion for the inhabitants, it being a great honor to light furnaces or engines from the perpetual fire. The major rivals of the Promethean Guild are the Electro Guild, who control electricity, geothermal heat and even sunlight. Within each hive city, one or the other of these guilds will usually be in ascendancy, determining whether the inhabitants use electricity or liquid fuel to keep their lights on at night. Within Hive Primus, the Prometheum Guild long ago ousted the other power guilds by restricting the use of other kinds of energy to the great houses and specific manufactoria sectors. This, combined with the abundance of Prometheum within the Palatine Cluster, has ensured their dominance for many decades. The Water Guild, or Mercator Nautica Water, as one might imagine, is an incredibly valuable resource on Necromunda. From the imported quantum-spun ice water sipped on by the nobility, to the vast quantities of sluice runoff which are essential to many of the bulk industrial processes. In between these is the recycled water that most of the population survives on, and nobody wants to think too long about where it comes from. The Water Guild, also known as the Guild of Thirst, or Nauticans, controls every drop of drinkable liquid to drip down the hive beneath the spire. It also falls to this guild to maintain the great cisterns of Hive Primus. These vast tanks are filled with billions and billions of liters of water to slake the thirst of the entire city, and meet the cooling and cleaning needs of the Manufactoria too. Maintaining and defending those cisterns falls to the Water Guild as well. Guilders encased in heavy diving suits enter these flooded chambers to test the invariably mixed quality of the water, repair any leaks, which if left unattended could drown entire domes, and clear out the inevitable infestations of monsters. Agents of the Water Guild are festooned in bottles and canisters, their precious cargo sloshing about as they traverse the hive. In the Underhive, where locals must often survive on the meager output of their water stills, the Water Guild is a lifeline. Some settlements, especially those out in the bad zones, rely entirely on the Guild of Water for survival, and the delay of a water caravan, even for a few days, can spell disaster. Pipes and cisterns are of special concern to the Water Guild, many bearing their symbol, warning away water thieves on pain of surgical dehydration. Woe to the settlement which crosses the Water Guild, lest they find their water cut off entirely to die in a desert of ash and rust. The Corpse Guild, or Mercator Pallidus. The Corpse Guild regulates the trade and production of the infamous corpse starch. This is one of the most important roles in all the great guilds, as millions of people are born and die every day on Necromunda. Without the orderly disposal of corpses, plague and disease would run rampant. Without the food source that these corpses provide, when rendered down in the great corpse grinder plants that dominate entire sectors of every hive city, the population would ironically starve. The Corpse Guild gathers up thousands of dead every cycle, filling up their mortuary caravans with piled bodies, or rendering them down in mobile grinding automata. 
Few guilds have ever challenged the power of the Corpse Guild, for the power of death hangs heavy about them, and humans, even on a planet like Necromunda, cling to ancient superstition. Some believe it is bad luck to even look upon the face of a Corpse Guilder, and when word reaches a settlement of their approach, the guild often arrives to find every door and window shut tight, with the bodies piled neatly at the door. On the bright side, you don't have to be a social person to work in this group. Arriving at the halfway point of these guilds, we have the Slave Guild, or Mercator Sanguis. Within the brutal hierarchy of Hive Primus, there are those who are not fortunate enough to be born into servitude to one of the clan houses. These people are little more than serfs, resources with no more rights than a servitor. They are bought and sold in their millions, claimed as spoils of war, ownership of them sometimes changing without even them realizing. The Slave Guild oversees all such transactions, from the selling of individual chain gangs, enslaved gangers who do only their master's bidding, to trading ownership of entire manufactorums, which actually come with all their workers included. The rattle of chains and cages heralds the arrival of the Slave Guild, their agents always carrying hefty lengths of chain or complex shackle webs with which they transport their goods. When a ganger is sold to the guilders, it is to the slavers that they go, the guild specializing in finding the right buyer for the right merchandise. Whether it is working the forge, fighting in the pits, or sold to an upheaver as a pet. The slave guild also holds dominion over much of Hive Primus's gambling and gladiatorial combat. Some clan houses, most notably House Goliath, have heavy stakes in such enterprises, but even they must deal with the slavers if they want to see their champions reach the arena. Pit slaves are a highly valuable commodity in many hives, each one augmented with cyber weaponry, psycho conditioning, and extensive combat training. Many hive settlements have an arena or a fighting pit, ranging from the gleaming gladiatorums of the upper hive to actual pits lined with rusty spikes in the depths of the underhive. The locations make for a focal point of a community, people gathering to watch executions and bloody pit fighting. And the guild is always there to take a cut. The Guild of Coin, or the Mercator Geld. Few individuals may travel a hive city freely, as many citizens are destined to spend their lives bound to the levels in which they were born. One of the ancient rights given to the Merchants Guild is the freedom to traverse Necromunda in the execution of their jobs, and extract coin from other travelers. The Guild of Coin are the gatekeepers of the hive cities of Necromunda and the roads between them overseeing the transportation of all terrestrial cargo and even a portion of the goods sent out through the Eye of Selene to the greater Necromundan solar cluster. Masters of coin forge keys for the clan convoys, each token a powerful seal to allow passage past the many way stations, ash gates, and high fortresses through which a convoy must pass. The key is a potent symbol of the Guild of Coin and each master of coin carries with them staves, rings, and shackles filled with keys of all shapes and sizes. Each one is cast from a steel of a different hive or stone of a different road, and these grant rites of passage for the guilder who bears them. The sixth of today's guilds is the Electro Guild, or Mercator Lux. The Electro Guild, often simply referred to as the Grid, regulates and brokers electrical power on Necromunda in all its forms, from geothermal heat to sunlight. These guilders measure out kilojoules and lumens, ensuring the efficient transmission of power and light from source to destination. Every sparking joule of power must be accounted for so that the appropriate fees can be exacted for all who draw power from the Hive City's thermal core. Agents clad in luminous garb and carrying flickering electro-lanterns are the heralds of the grid, their entourage is lighting up the underhive like stars traversing the night sky. If a settlement, manufactorum, or hablock wants to keep the lights on and their people warm, it is the Electro Guild that they must visit. The main rival of the Electro Guild, as mentioned earlier, is the Prometheum Guild, and the two often wage bitter trade wars with different gangs and factions backing each other in different parts of Hive Primus or different regions of Necromunda. 
the ruling imperial house doesn't officially back either guild, but benefits greatly from their endless conflicts and continued struggle over Necromunda's limited energy sources. The Air Guild, also known as the Mercator Temperium. The Air Guild controls the flow of breathable air through the cities of Necromunda. Within the iron mountains of the hives, where air pools and stagnates in domes, passages and caverns, and the air beyond the skin of the hive is threaded with toxins and pollutants, this guild holds the threads of life itself. Every turbine and ventilation shaft, air refiner and smoke vent is controlled by the guild, either directly or by the cut they take from those that actually run them. By their command, entire sectors of the hive can choke, freeze, or slowly die from breathing tainted air. Agents of the air guild often carry small, many-mouthed creatures called zephs with them. These little creatures are drawn to fresh air, squeaking and growling when they find a pure vein of oxygen. When a zeph finds a good source of air, it grows in size, the air sacs in its muscles swelling until it becomes a floating monstrosity. The air guild enjoys the irony of having air thieves torn apart by packs of zephs, the creatures growing massive on their stolen oxygen. And finally for today, the Iron Guild or the Mercator Munda. The natural resources that established Necromunda to begin with, as one of the most productive worlds in the Imperium, are long played out. And so the planet's industries are fed by the recycling of the encrusted wastes of countless previous generations. It is the Iron Guild that brokers deals between the mines and the forge, ensuring that a constant supply of reclaimed ore and extracted minerals reach the hive cities. They are the middlemen between the great mining settlements of House Orlok and the mega forges of House Goliath, among others. So the clan houses might never have to deal directly with each other, but may still profit from their labors and meet their quotas. Much of the resources overseen by the Iron Guild come from ruined hive cities and the continent-spanning mountain range known as the Spoil. Clad in hazard suits, the guilders lead groups of prospectors and accompany clan house expeditions into perilous regions. If it is hauled out of an ash waste or dredged up from the underhive and sold on the iron market, the Iron Guild gets a cut, though they prefer to get there first and make the claim themselves. Ritz are then sold for the right to work a ruin or a region, and all the finds are molecular branded, so that not a single lump of iron finds its way to the hives without the guild's knowledge. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these less famous but incredibly powerful merchant guilds of Necromunda for today. Initially, I just wanted to dive into the series by covering one of the clan houses, like Goliath or Asher. But now that I've read about these guilds, I'm happy I narrated this first. Not only are they very interesting to learn about, in my opinion, but they also show a great dichotomy. A world like Necromunda might be known for its great houses struggling and perpetual anarchy, but on the other spectrum we have the guilds which are both powerful and also very organized and efficient. That said, which of these did you find the most interesting? Which do you think is the most powerful? For me, I gotta go with the logical choice and pick the Air Guild. Nothing kills you faster than the lack of oxygen. Anyway, do share your thoughts in the comments and leave a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot and the Emperor protects.